This is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. There's not a second I don't miss you. You went away. Excuse me as I rock on. That's Went Away by Dorothy Lane. Dorothy Lane out of Martinez, California. If you heard last episode with Nick Nobbs, who is a, uh, one of the four members of the band, that's out of the Cut and Dry album. Check them out at DorothyLaneMusic.com. Enjoy. Yeah. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Ruel's Running Podcast. I'm your host, Ruel Abadam. What's going on? What's going down? Hope everybody's doing okay. <clears throat> um, if you are a new listener, welcome to the show. It's uh, it's the running show, not so much about running. It's about uh, just running around, getting your life, getting through your life. Drinking my coffee. And um, <clears throat> if you are a return listener, what's up, guys? Good to be back. Good to have you back. I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, kind of in a weird, in a weird state. Uh, not that, you know, I live in a weird state, but yes, I do live in a weird state. But I'm talking about my state of being. I'm in a, a weird um, mood. It's kind of surreal. But before we get into my surreal mood. Um, how about we uh, talk about food? What's cooking, y'all? <laughs> yeah, uh, man, it's uh, wetter, 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 weather's getting warmer, and uh, I have some beef short ribs that I need to cook. I need to cook fire up on a grill, so I haven't. I've yet to cook them. They're waiting in the uh, I don't know what you call it, the chiller in the fridge. At home, you know, one of the little plastic drawers at the uh, bottom of the refrigerator with a little slider indicator that says uh, more moisture, less moisture. You sw- slide it off to one side. It's for it's a it's it gets the the get gets it ready for things like vegetables, and you slide it on the other side, and it gets it ready for you know storing things like meat and. What I've found, I don't know if it's just our uh, our refrigerator freezer unit is uh, either really effective or ineffective, but I found that if I have it set a certain way, um, it gets pretty damn cold at the bottom in at that bottom drawer. And if I have th- some veggies down there, they uh, they kind of get a little frosty. So I found that. It's it's a good place to stick um, some cuts of meat that I want to uh, cook, you know, <clears throat> in a day or two. It keeps it most, you know, for the most part frozen, but not rock hard frozen throughout. Um, but just enough to to keep it, um, you know, I don't know. It's kind of like you ever w- walk into a grocery store and they've got the f- the the frozen food section, but there are these gigantic, you know, bins of um, uh, containing f- frozen foods and meats and stuff, but it's just wide open on top. And you'll find them at like, I don't know, at a, like a Sprouts or something where you can go and find frozen blueberries. And they're sitting in these these freezer units, but it's just exposed on top. So kind of reminds me of that, <clears throat> except... It's not exposed on the top, but it keeps it cold enough uh, that you know that it'll be safe during storage. It won't go bad. <clears throat> Anyways, so I've got those beef sherbs that I want to get done. You know, I'm actually feeling in the mood for another slab of meat. I probably want to pick up a, a rib roast. Haven't done those in a while, and uh, I've talked about it in in a, in a past episode where. 
I just butter it up with some herbs and garlic and 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 uh stick it in the oven. Anyways, that's a diff that's for a, that's that's been talked about before and that's maybe for another episode for me to talk about again. But uh what I've done lately is um it's you know, I don't cook it that often and it's something that my mom used to cook and uh it was something that my wife is was sort of craving for and she went out to the the Asian market and picked up um what's called a a bottle gourd bottle gourd it's uh kind of a squash i guess and it's uh the way it's prepared is the well the dish itself it's i'm not going to say what the recipe is because I'm going to sound like an idiot because the recipe's name is in is in Filipino. Um but uh it uh has uh the sliced bottle gourd. This doesn't even sound d- delicious, but trust me it is. It's a bottle gourd and it's cooked in onions, garlic, tomatoes, a little bit of fish sauce, shrimp, and pork belly. <laughs> right when I said the pork belly, you guys are like, "Yeah, that sounds right." Um, but it's it's awesome. I should have taken a picture, but I'll probably share a recipe so that you guys can pronounce it for yourselves. And uh it's pretty awesome. It's 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 basically I'll, the recipe itself didn't have the pork belly in it, but that's the way that my mom used to cook it so i just adapted the recipe and added what i needed to add and it's essentially this i'll put some i'll have a hot pan or pot and i'll and i'll throw in some sliced pork bellies and i'll get that um for the most part cooked but not overcooked if that even makes sense then i'll pull the meat out so put it set it aside and then i'll have all of that that fatty uh, pork fat, you know, still in the pot. And uh, what I'll do is, I'll put in the uh, the the garlic and onions, and then uh, the, for a couple minutes, then I'll add some 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 um, sliced tomatoes. Add that, <clears throat> and then uh, let that kind of uh, cook a little. Then I'll add uh, like about a tablespoon of fish sauce, and then you know integrate that. And then um, I'll have um, about a half a pound of shrimp peeled, and these were these were these were peeled and didn't have any heads on them. And I know you guys are freaking out when I some of you guys are freaking out like sh- heads on shrimp. What are you talking about? Yeah, shrimp originally, um, you know, they don't originally come in the wild battered and crispy, uh, and in all you can eat. Um, 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 opportunities <laughs> they did at one point in time have shells and heads and kind of just creeped around in the water <laughs> so got some raw shrimp cleaned out without the heads and deshelled and um, I had that thawing in, uh, in some water I mean that they, they thaw so quickly in water and what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull out the shrimp without the water and I'll add the uh, the shrimp to the tomatoes, onions, and garlic. Also, what ha- that had been seasoned with fish sauce. Get that cooking, and it's looking awesome. <clears throat> then I'll add back the pork. It's looking more awesome and smelling great. <coughs> I'm still dealing with some of that throaty stuff. I think I'm I flipped over from some weird flu thing and right into allergies. So, I'm back on the Flonies as a as a precaution, and uh, so I've got I've got all those ingredients working in the pot. Don't worry, I didn't leave you hanging. And um, then I, now I add all of the sliced uh, bottle gourd. Um, in in the in in the Philippines it. Rather than saying bottle gourd, which is the English way to describe it, we just call it upo. No, not not poo poo, 
Upo or Opo, rather, Opo or something like that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, when I was growing up, my, uh, we lived next door to my cousins and my uncles and uh, I have a cousin named Ed, Edwin. And uh, when my mom used to cook this dish, you know, w- you know, in the beginning when we used to, used to started eating it, we would ask what it was, what the bottle gourd was. We never called it bottle gourd. She called it up- Opo. Upo, and, um, but for whatever reason, she, you know, my cousin, my cousin's father, my, my cousin Ed's father, my uncle, he, he grew the bottle gourds in the back garden. You know, they had lots of tons of vegetables, but in, in a, in a nice stretch of, um, of the back property, it was, it was like the whole backyard was practically vegetables and, um, and uh some and you know there's some a couple of pig pan a couple of pig pans for when you know pigs were raised and anyways so my mom would say oh you know you know here's this is what we have for lunch or dinner and, and rather than calling it a bottle gourd or upo she would call it um edwin's plant my uh, my cousin ed you know since it, since it was my cousin ed's father who had the plant and was growing those vegetables my mom just called it, oh, I cooked Edwin's plant today. <laughs> so that's how I I knew it <laughs> growing up. It sounds kind of silly, but it's as, as an adult, I kind of look back. I laugh, but um, I just find how, um, you know, in our own little family, we came up with our own little ways of describing food and and having it be meaningful for us. And, and it, it, it just kind of stuck. So anyways... Um, I add the this, the sliced bottle gourd into the mixture, and it's fantastic. And remember when I had the the shrimp soaking in water to sort of thaw out? I kept about a cup or two of that of that um, of that water, um, or you want to call it shrimp broth, right? It's not a type of broth that you want to drink because it's raw shrimp. But I, you know, I don't know. It depends on how you do it. I don't recommend it, but but um, I I put about about a enough of that shrimp broth into the pot so that there's enough moisture to cover all of the the solid ingredients and uh, I br- bring the whole thing to a boil season salt and pepper for I bring it to a boil and then let it simmer for about I don't know seven to ten minutes something like that till the uh, the uh, the bottle gourd is cooked kind of like pasta you want it um, al dente you want it cooked but you want it sort of firm and that's that and you know i I prepared that in the in the evening and i just i turned it off turned the stove off and i just allowed it to sit in the pot overnight so that in the the next day my wife was able to take some of it to work with her and you know traditionally that stuff is eaten eating eaten with a side of rice or side of steamed rice but Rather than doing the steam, steamed rice, what I also do cook is um, the broccoli. And the broccoli is basically halfway steamed. You know, you want to steam your broccoli. You want to steam your broccoli uh, where it's it's cooked but still sort of got enough crisp. You don't want it sort of mushy. So I'll do that. And I'll take the uh, I'll take the, the broccoli, set it aside, <clears throat> drain all the liquid, set it aside. Uh, all steamed and I'll steam it with just a little bit of water like I don't know uh, uh, three quarters of an inch in a pot of water and I'll put the the broccoli florets in the in, in the in the pot and I'll bring it to a boil then I'll cover it and I'll turn down the heat to sort of medium medium heat medium to medium high and uh, you know let that go for about eight ten minutes to maybe more like eight minutes to get it to that that point of uh, uh, appropriate de- uh, steamed uh, steamness, if you want to call it. So, and then <clears throat> I'll dump it all out and I'll clear out the pot. And in the pot, what I'll do is I'll add uh, a bunch of olive oil. I'll heat it up and then I'll b- throw in, uh, you know, several cloves of, of minced uh, garlic. And I'll uh, let the garlic kind of cook a bit, but not brown. And I'll basically have this olive olive oil, garlic, um you know, mixture going, and I'll what I'll do is I'll I'll 
put back in the the broccoli over all of that olive oil and garlic and I'll just sort of to- lightly toss it around just to get a lot of that oil and garlic uh, all over as much of the the pieces of broccoli and seasoned salt and pepper sea salt better over sea salt over kosher salt for whatever reason there's a little bit more saltiness in the sea salt I don't know if it's the quality of kosher salt we have or if it's just the nature of the two salts but sea salt definitely more have a saltier hit to it so I'll use that and some fresh cracked pepper and that's a wonderful side and if you want to eat it as a meal you just better cook a whole lot of broccoli and that's what's been cooking yeah and uh since I'm in the kitchen you know I I uh I need to order some more coffee and I need to get online to pure coffee club dot com and get me a get me get resupplied of coffee pure coffee club is not a sponsor of the show um but you know there are a ton of you listeners out there a ton of you one two or three of you listening who are familiar with with a pure coffee club um you know and that's um that's vinny and andy's company uh, Vinny Tortorich and Andy Schreiber, they run Pure Coffee Club. And, uh, yeah, I got to get that. I'm, I, I'm out, and today I had to fall, this, today, this morning, I had to fall back on some old beans, you know, and it did the job. It's sort of my backup beans. They're, they're an old bag of blue bottle coffee beans. I don't even remember what the, what kind of blue bottle coffee beans there were. They were it was, it was given to me as a gift, and the gift had three types of beans in them. And this remaining bag of beans were, to me, the least desirable of the three at the time I got the gift. You know, but I'm, I can't be picky, especially when it's the only coffee I have in the house. And did the job. My, my tastes have changed. My taste has changed. And. Um, I'm a bit more uh, tolerable and accepting of the coffee. And it's old. They're old beans. It's It's been over a year. So, you know, I just made sure when I stuck it in the grinder that I didn't see any weird weirdness on it. Just looked fine to me. Ground it all up, you know. Sometimes, you know, it's a battle out there. And, you know, you got to take what you can get. <laughs> so that, that was my coffee this morning. Ugh. Anyways, what are we talking about today? You know, about, I don't know, a while back, my wife and I, we switched phone carriers. And uh, so we, we pay less per month on cell service. And at, at the same time, we, uh, we, uh, the, the, the switchover allowed, gave us the capabilities to, uh, to use uh, our phones as wireless hotspots as needed. So that was cool. I mean, the the coverage is not as great as our previous carrier. And, you know, I don't care. These guys are, I mean, again, these guys, I'll talk about them. They're not, I'm not advertised. I'm, I guess if I talk about them, I'm advertising, but they're not sponsors or anything. But previously for a long time, my wife and I had a AT&T as a cell carriers. And then we switched to a Verizon and... You know, I know everyone's going to have their own opinion on one over the other. And the reality is here in Northern California, San Francisco Bay Area, you know, I've looked at the, the coverage maps and stuff. AT&T is dominant here around here. So if you want the best coverage, in my opinion, around Northern California, or I mean, specifically the San Francisco Bay Area, AT&T is probably going to be the better bet. You know, and I understand that, you know, individuals might have a different deal. It also depends on you know, your surroundings that can affect your ability to get coverage. But for a long time, we're the, the places we've, we've uh, inhabited or, you know, we, we functioned, you know, the coverage has been great. But, you know, we didn't have wireless hotspot uh, 
capabilities. And, you know, for the money we were paying, we should at least have that. So we uh, it took, a, took a long while playing with the idea. We finally decided on switching over to Verizon. So Verizon is kind of like number two, perhaps, in, in this area as far as coverage. <clears throat> And uh, and I and I I could and I see it I experience it, um, but it's a uh, paying less on it is is sort of the price we the benefit to the price of losing a little bit of performance or availability or whatever you want to call it, and we do have the option of getting Wi-Fi hotspot so you know that's there's a convenience there I mean it's not like super fast but it gets the job done i mean when i'm when i'm driving wait excuse me let me turn on this vehicle ah geez louise toasting in this thing it's like it's like 70 degrees the windows are all rolled up i was trying to not have all of this engine noise and and ac noise kind of humming in the background but you know what we're we're just gonna have to be okay with it so your your podcaster host me doesn't die and then you'll just be listening to the humming and whatnot on its own but maybe you're meditating and that's something you want a little bit of white noise it'll help your situation but you're not so anyways um so yeah, it was great. And plus, you know, um, there's there's some uh, workplace benefits to sort of get a little uh, a little get a little deal on uh, your the cell 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 costs. So there's a little bit of a discount from the workplace standpoint. You know, so you know, not bad. And uh, remember when we when we switched over, it was pretty easy to do, and pretty happy about it, especially seeing that you know we were saving on that but when i went back on to the at&t site uh to see if i had any uh, outstanding outstanding balance that i needed to take care of because i was prepared to do so um i couldn't log in it's sort of like the whole process of switching having verizon switch you from at&t to them it it killed the at&t account for some reason so i'm thinking okay well if there is anything, I'll get billed or we'll get billed or we'll hear something. You know, so month, a month goes by and nothing. But okay, another month goes by and nothing. I'm like, okay, maybe it's covered. Maybe there is no outstanding balance. And month after month, that was the deal, right? Then didn't didn't, didn't just didn't think about it. Until recently when get a get a something in the mail, um... From basically a a, a a debt collector collection service um, for the amount that I was prepared to pay for uh, to, to close off the AT and T account, and on the statement, it was for it was for AT and T. The collectors were collect for were you know representing the debt that uh, was owed towards AT and T. So I'm like. Motherfuckers, right? It's like, anyways, I'm like, great. All right. I mean, it. They, they, if they wanted money, I'd be happy to give them money. But they should have fucking told me that they needed money, right? And uh, month after month, nothing, right? So now, then, then here it's in the form of like, oh, you know, it's uh, we're collecting on behalf of such and such, and if you don't cover it within thirty days, then we're going to report to your. Uh, your, your your credit report like who gives a fuck anyways so that was pretty annoying so I just wanted to say <clears throat> at t you can suck my dick and uh, you can eat my ass um, I sent your money so go fuck yourself and uh, yeah there you go <laughs> and moving right along what a great opener. We go from shrimp, bottle gourds, and having AT&T suck my ass. Something like that. Now, <clears throat> how about um, 
we get in the spirit and talk a little bit about spirits. Not a whole lot, just a few. In particular, bourbon. Um, that's been my uh, my drink of choice these days um, because I'm a cheap bastard. And for a while, I've been thinking, you know what? This Jim Beam bourbon is just... It's not doing it for me anymore. Meaning, you know, time to time I'll get a bottle and I'll work through it. And um, and I don't work through it like like I, I'm holding a bottle by the neck in my hand and I'm walking around home, you know, <laughs> sucking on a bottle of bourbon. I'll like, you know, in the evening, it'll be a nightcap. It'll be just a little thing, a, a little a little short thing, a bourbon in a glass with a little like, cube in it or two. And it's just something to just sort of like work on uh, through the evening when everybody's in bed and I'm like watching Netflix on the iPad and uh, or something, right? <clears throat> and uh, so so the other, uh, uh, another day, uh, so the other day took the family over to uh, a really fancy schmancy uh um, restaurant called uh, Chili's, <laughs> and and I'll tell you what, I don't like Chili's. At least that's what I said for a long time. And they did something different. And uh, now I like Chili's. I mean, we don't go regularly, but it's all right, right? And uh, and and I didn't like. Chili's, the restaurant, you right? You know, the Chili's, you know, the old, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, I want my baby back. You know, Chili's, I don't know, baby back ribs. Those guys. Um, I didn't like it for a long time. I didn't, for so long that I, I had a gift card for Chili's and I just kept it in my wallet for a long time. Then I took it out of my wallet because my wallet was getting too, 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 uh, too bulky uh, with not because I had a lot of cards but because I just kept on jamming shit in there like paper and receipts and business cards and and um, you know whatever um, and uh, so then the thing the, the gift card has been in like my underwear drawer shh don't tell anybody I keep stuff in my underwear drawer um <laughs> I have like, what else is in my underwear drawer? Um, I have extra insoles for when I used to buy Hoka running shoes. I've got a piece of crap utility knife. Um, I've got some unused, you know, I've got some extra game tokens for for uh, for uh, it's either a Chuck E. Cheese or uh, no longer uh, similar place here in the Tri Valley. Um, called uh i don't remember their name they're just they're so defunct that i don't even remember their name and what else do i have in, in there i've got like old expired debit cards and uh what else i have this i have this like neoprene purse like little pocket zip purse that says nsng on it <laughs> random stuff like I don't have like a separate drawer for crap, so I just open up my underwear drawer and I just throw the crap along with the underwear drawer. I mean, why does it have to be the underwear drawer, right? Why not the socks or the t-shirts or the jeans? Huh. Okay. Anyways, um, where the hell was I going with this? <laughs> Let's backtrack. Underwear drawer. Underwear drawer. Chili's. Chili's. Chili's gift card. So the Chili's gift card. <laughs> Sorry, Lonnie. Um, so the Chili's gift card kept for a freaking long time. And I don't know. One day we're like decide, you know what? Now we're three kids in. Let's go to Chili's. I think when I got the card, I was like one kid in. We were one kid. We just had one the one kid. So it's been a long time. And it's like, yeah, you know, we're just kind of think we're, we're the kids are at a point where, you know, we can really sit down and just kind of 
have a good time and not so be so worried about like things like like baby carriers and getting a special setup with baby food or that kind of stuff. It's just like everyone can order something on the menu and we could just be normal. Except we're not normal because we're just who the heck's normal? Who wants to be normal? So anyways, we get to Chili's um, in our area and I'm like, okay, let's go, let's go see what happens. And by the way, I pulled out that old gift card. I better call the number in the back to make sure that I still have some sort of value in this card and sure enough still had the $25 you know unused and uh sat down and and uh it's <laughs> the whole point of this whole thing and I'm hope I don't forget you know I won't be surprised if more and more stuff that I shop for buy and get shipped to my home comes from Amazon, it's just a reality, right? And if this is your reality, go to ruelsrunning.com, click through to the Amazon banner to get to Amazon. Why am I asking you to do so? Well, it is a no-cost-to-you way, if you like listening to Ruel's Running Podcast, it is a way that you can help the show out without spending more than you've already spent while shopping at the good folks at Amazon.com. So help us out. Go to rulesrunning.com, click through to the Amazon.com site, and shop, connect, and enjoy. But we sit down and we 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 sort of we kind of like feel like we're celebrating something uh, and you know we get to use this gift card too and it's like it, it, it less lessens the blow out of the out of pocket and my wife and I are kind of smart about it I mean one kid gets I don't know I think he gets like a cheese a pepperoni pizza the other kid I can't remember what he gets and the other kid I can't remember what she gets but I do remember what my wife and I get they have a I think they got a prime rib it's like a prime rib or a rib some nice piece of steak and on the side it's well the steaks the 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 the, the prime rib it's like butter garlic right you gotta have some butter garlic kind of finishing it off and you can get some steamed broccoli I'm like and on a, on a side of steamed broccoli and it comes with mashed potatoes but don't give us the mashed potatoes just give us more of the steamed broccoli and give us more of that garlic butter and we'll put it all over our broccoli so we'll order that you know and it's it's a nice cut of steak so it's going to be a little bit on the pricier end but pricier pricier end but not too pricey for two we order that we split it it's perfect for the two of us you know we get a taste we enjoy it and we're not like you know we're eating good and we're not stuffing ourselves silly and that's what we order and i also because i feel like i'm celebrating i'm like give me a glass of maker's marker markers make maker's mark and that's how familiar i am with that particular brand of bourbon because i don't get it that often because the jim beam is cheaper i wish jim beam could sponsor this podcast <laughs> But I have a glass of the bourbon over in Chili's and, you know, I'm feeling good, right? And I'm thinking, man, I might have to change it up at home because I'm feeling good with, with, uh, with his makers. And, and I know there's, there's a line he's going to tell me, you should try this and try that, which I'm happy to try if I can stand to spend just a few more dollars, a few more tens or twenties of dollars on a bottle i will and i guess it just depends on my moods once some days i swear when i used to drink a shit ton of wine you know i used to regularly buy the shit crap private not you know it's sort of like the white labeled i don't know it's not like safeway wine it's when you go to safeway and you buy um it's called i think it's called firefly or something like that that's their wine they just give it some, you know, hippy-dippy name and label that doesn't say 
Safeway or, <laughs> you know, who wants to drink wine that says Safeway, you know, or, you know, if you're at Costco, they use Kirkland. So anyways, um, the one, if Fire Ridge, and fire, not Fire, Fire, Fire Ridge or something like that, some shit like that. And it was like their cheapest. I, I, I was used to to be so much into the red wines I'd buy the Syrahs and the Shirazes and that kind of stuff and and it would be always be that label the Fire Ridge or whatever and later I learned that's that's just Safeway's wine <laughs> you know like okay no wonder why it's so cheap but I used to buy a ton of that stuff um, so my approach to you know getting bourbon is like I'm, just, I'm cheap so I'll get the cheap stuff it's good but Sometimes I'm not going to get the Fire Ridge, Firefly red wine. I'll like I'll spend the extra 10 or 20 dollars to get something that's 10 or 20 dollars more because I feel like I deserve it. Only for only for me to be disappointed is like that was expensive red wine. It didn't taste that good. It tasted like it's been sitting in somebody's hot trunk for a while. Yuck. Which always gets me when you, when you Around here, there's the gas station sort of mini mart convenience stores, kind of like the 7 Eleven style gas station. You know what I'm talking about? And the whole one side of the, the store is glass, and they'll have like stacks of ca- boxes of beer up along the glass and cases or bottles of wine up along the glass and then the sun is shining beating through the glass and it's just like toasting the beverages even sodas and water and especially like bottled water like in all that clear plastic you know how much damage and crap is happening to those products i mean just except for the water you shouldn't be drinking any of that shit anyways right um but all that stuff is getting damaged one way or another anyways that so <laughs> so yeah cheap bourbon um jim beam looking looking you know throw some bottles my way somehow and i'll keep talking about jim beam but you know or makers or whoever else <clears throat> you know um this coming holidays i'm gonna write a letter to Santa and just give him a whole big list of like I would like a crate of this spirit and a crate of this whiskey and uh, (laughs) do it do that so um, but I was wrong I I got back home like a couple nights I mean a couple nights later I'm at home you know getting my nightcap and I'm happily sipping on my gym beam so I was wrong I didn't I didn't need to switch it up I was just um, feeling it yeah. Um, speaking of switching up, I don't talk about gear too much, but I'm in new shoes. And I'm in, not right now, but I also picked up a new pair of shorts. Which, it's not really a pair, it's just a single item, garment of shorts. It's not a pair. I don't understand why we would say pair of shorts or pair of pants because it makes sense to say I have a pair of socks a pair of gloves but I don't know why for me I don't know if it's the same with you people talk like I'm wearing a pair of jeans but who the hell wears two sets of jeans at one time right and yes there are two legs in the pants but why is you're not like this is one pant and this is my this is my left pant this is my right pant and they're joined together by the zippery thing and the area that kind of hikes up my ass like a g-string depending on the fit it's, not, it's just a single garment it should just be called jean Zzz, maybe pant Zzz, I don't know Bottoms, no. Yeah, no. Un- no, not undergarments. Anyways, so, you know, you, you guys know that I've been begging about getting new shoes, you know, trying to see if I can get somebody to, somebody, some listener out there to help me score a pair of shoes. I picked up a, I picked up a pair. Um, and I walked into my local 
not that local running store like 26 miles from home I know because that's, I used to run it <laughs> and uh, so I went to that, that running store up in Concord and I'm like oh look they have the types of shoes not in the color I wanted but they're all going to get funked out and funked in, funk, funky anyway so who cares I'm colorblind so who cares um, but the type of shoe and I put on the size that I expected to to be and it was tight I'm like what the heck so I had to go a size up a half size up rather and I, I picked them up and now I don't have to worry about, worry about shoes for the next event because man those old ultras are really like falling apart you know and they're so worn out on, on the, the, the the bottom that my feet are kind of got this weird kind of tilt outside outward yeah and that's not good um, but I keep them anyways <laughs> I, I wore them last night when I went when I did a workout and jump rope and all that stuff. But yeah, new pair of shoes. Happy with them. Um, and then, you know, the other day we were at a, the outlet mall with the family, and right next to the play area, there's a uh, the North Face outlet store. And I walked in. You know, I don't often go in there, but for this on this particular day, I'm thinking I'll just go in because I just don't want to just watch kids run around right now and so did that and didn't have any expectations and lo and behold a pair of uh, better than naked uh shorts just like my other ones but a little up to date it's got more sort of pocket type stuff in the in the in the band and still the same inner liner sort of like they're, they're like biker shorts under and they've got tons of storage um, outside, you know, on it so that the outer shell of the shorts covers it all up when I've got stuff jammed in there like maybe my phone, a little zippy of, of, of almonds, you know, a bar or two of uh, Epic bars and you just, you just wedge a whole bunch of stuff, you know, a little zippy of electrolytes. I'll just put them all over my thighs and you won't see them because they're just... They're invisible. <laughs> um, so I picked up one of those and on sale, you know. Oh, by the way, the shoes too got on a deal. As long as I had like purchased their like membership, like sure, right? Over the course of, I don't know, four or five years that I've banned going to that store because I just, you know, couldn't stand observing the bullshit that had been going on in the stores regarding telling people that, they need to step on this treadmill and oh my god look at the way you're running the camera is showing you see how your ankle is kind of torqued one way or the other that's not right you need an insole you need you know and Vinny talks about this Vinny Todrich talks about this on his podcast you know I know what he's talking about because I was that same guy who had been told crap you know I went there to buy shoes and they're like what do you need stability non-stability blah blah, blah. let's go find out run on the treadmill right so okay so you do this with your foot strike, therefore you need to get this type of stability, instability, whatever type shoe. And in addition, because the shoe itself isn't good enough to correct your situation, we're going to add to that a custom insole, right? <laughs> Stupid. It's like, well, what if I just bought the custom insole and put it in my old crappy worn out shoes wouldn't that in theory correct all the shit that's going on but no we have got to get you the brand new shoe with these specs followed you know in stack on the custom insoles for 75 bucks what a bunch of horse shit and he and Vinny's right on his podcast it's like some minimum wage kid and i can remember this kid's face and his straight long black hair you know thinking how does this guy know so much about running and shoes and running mechanics and all this stuff horse shit so yeah but i that was like 2010 2011 i didn't know anything right i just bought into what the conventional 
bullshit was around what you needed to run. Um, but yeah. <laughs> um, got, got a new pair of shorts and shoes, guys. Woohoo! Um, and the run, I guess we'll talk about the run. The run is sometime 20, I think it's the 21st. 21st perhaps of of a uh, of May something like that. somebody look up Eloni 50k and whatever the date is that's that's what it is so it's O H L O N E 50k dot com something like that I don't know Google will auto uh, will su- auto suggest and spell check and all that good stuff and uh, I'm in rough shape I'm a uh, I, you know, I, like I mentioned, I came off of this flu thing, and then now I'm trying to get right, ramp up for, for allergies and stuff. But it's kept me away from running regularly, and you know, I went out a couple of days ago, and and uh, went out for about an hour, came back, but before coming back, my right calf. Um, tightened up pretty bad but you know like a good runner idiot I just like well I'm not gonna stand here and wait for a freaking Uber to take me back to the to work to my starting point I'm just gonna like figure it out I'll stretch out I'll kind of rub it a little I'll sort of change my running gait I'll just kind of muscle through it whatever you know and I got it done right uh uh almost a couple of hours out uh, altogether but you know the price I had to pay was that I had a really tight sore right leg and uh, you know have to go back to uh, you know treating it and some sort of massage and stretching and all that stuff so it's 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 pretty much like hamburger right now because I've been stretching and running the uh, foam roller over it I take I've and take my rattan sticks and I'll use it to help, you know, do some deep tissue type stuff. And I picked up a couple of lacrosse balls as well. So I'm just like mincing my leg pretty bad. And, you know, that itself is pretty damaging in a way. But in a good way, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> so, yeah, the run's that 50K and it's going to be hot and it's going to be long. I have a couple of time checks to... to early on to 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 get to and you know hopefully i can i the way i described it yesterday was i have two checkpoint time time checkpoints of around nine miles and around 12 miles uh the nine mile is after a, a small climb and the descent nine miles then, a, then back to climbing with a very small descent from that point 12 miles and then if i can get to those two points before a cutoff time then I'm allowed to continue for the rest of the course, which would mean a shit ginormous climb followed by a shit ginormous descent in, into into the finish. So it's like work hard so that you could be eligible to die. <laughs> That's what it's about. Um, it is for me because I've never hit this course before. Um, sometime between then and now, if I can stand to take a, a day off, I'll uh, hit the trail. I'll try to cover, um, you know, those checkpoints and then back and uh, just to sort of do a little uh, preparation. Um, I really want to, you know, finish it. You know, the, the bonus for me would be to finish it um, without getting cut off. I mean, obviously, if I, if I, if I don't make cut off, I won't finish it. But I just want to finish. And that doesn't mean finish by, you know, the cutoff time. It's just finish the course, just like the last one. You know, I might, I, last time I didn't beat the cutoff, the overall cutoff, by like 10 minutes. But so what? I come, I cuff my fucking feet covered all the fucking course and that excites me you know that I can just cover ground um 
then, you know, bonuses. If I cover that ground within the allotted uh, time slot for the for the event, that would be a fucking bonus. But yeah. Ah. Here's some old news. Um, speaking of uh, old... <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, the uh, Vinny Toad Rich No Sugar No Grains Facebook group, the private one, the invisible one. Um, one of the most hilarious threads I've seen in a while um, because I'm not on the group um, uh, multiple times a day, but um, listeners who, uh, who, for the listeners who are in the group, know what I'm talking about, but let's talk to the folks who don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So there's this Facebook group that um, I'm a, a team, uh, an admin team member for. It's the Vinny Toad Rich No Sugar No Grains group. And why is that significant? Because it's uh, a lifestyle that, um, you know, I subscribe to. Uh, and uh, it's a whole, it's one of the whole reasons why the podcast, this silly little show started to begin with. Um, there's a man by the name of Vinny Tordrich who is a uh, who's been in the fitness uh, industry for a long time, and uh, he's been able to help a shit ton of people, um, you know, with weight loss and health and fitness. <coughs> and um, there's this Facebook group that's been around for several years that I somehow I managed to be a part of, and then somehow I managed to be an admin of, and. Uh, and right now there's a there's like five <coughs> semi and regularly regular uh, admins in the group. So you know we it's, it's our way to give back to the community. It's our way to for us to support the community. It's a way for us to help others whenever we can. <coughs> Damn. So, anyways, back to the Facebook group. It's a funny thread. It had to do with. Um, one of the members in the group took a picture of a bottle of coke, a, a jar of coconut oil. Wanted to know if it was uh, if it was okay. Um, and the reason why it was hilarious was because the guy was, the person was holding up this jar of coconut oil, had a, and, and had a picture taken, and it looked like he was in the bathroom. And on top of the bathroom, the toilet tank sat this gigantic dildo. You know, it had like. The back end of the dildo was like a suction cup, or looked like it, and it was just kind of like, you know, stuck on top of the top of the toilet tank. The dildo facing straight up into the into the heavens, <clears throat> right? Excuse me, but it's kind of faded, you know, not faded, but little a little blurry, and you know, because the jar is in focus, and and it was just it was a setup, and it, it probably it wasn't even the guys. <laughs> jar of coconut oil but it was hilarious it's like you know some people got it most people got it once they read through the comments of the thread but it was like you know when I first saw it I'm like yeah that coconut oil is fine as long as it's unrefined I think that's personally I love unrefined I love the flavor of the coconut oil and I'm like what the f- it's a big old dildo in the back of that picture <laughs> so yeah you know that is one of the funniest things I've ever I, I've seen in a long time in that group uh, for for the amount of time that I'm spending in the group. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Lonnie. Sorry, Mark. Sorry, Rebecca. Sorry, Tallulah. I'm not around as much, but you guys got it covered. <laughs> but I didn't miss the coconut oil and dildo. That didn't come out right. No, it's just not my time. Anyways, that was bad. And um, speaking of bad, um, I talked about sitting up, sucking on some whiskey while watching some Netflix on an iPad. And uh, I just wrapped up Into the Badlands on Netflix. And Netflix, if you want, you know, to, to give me free membership, that would be great as I continue to talk about Netflix on this podcast. <laughs> but Into the Badlands, Hulu, 
Into the Badlands. Amazon video. <laughs> um, if you guys don't know what it is, it's basically like this. It reminds me of Mad Max, Mel Gibbs, that type of stuff where it's like into the future, right? Where, to, where the, to, the society of today is just history. And what we have today is just sort of like equivalent to um, us looking at like, you know, Stonehenge or the the great pyramid the, the pyramids in at Giza you know like it's it's the future and but it's kind of like barbaric it's kind of like it's it's just it's not a cozy place you know in 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 this uh, series or uh, yeah I guess you call it series into the Badlands you know the the it's a place where it's ruled by barons and there are several barons and they they have you know their own like army they're they're called uh, they're called uh, clippers and uh, and they have their own set of basically citizens slash workers slash slaves they're called cogs you know and it's just there's these battles between barons for seeking power and property and stuff but it's it's interesting to me because you know it involves a ton of martial arts it's sort of like uh if any of you've seen martial arts movies in the past like matrix or or uh what the hell is that other one we'll just use matrix as an example you know and it's it's pretty awesome and people die and people backstab and people are 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 have to trust people that they or people have to join forces with folks that they really don't trust but to seek a a a mutual goal that type of stuff and a lot of a lot of backstabbing and killing and martial arts it's so cool finished it up there were just two seasons. Now I'm kind of left hanging. I don't know when the next season is going to come up. And um, by that time, I'll probably have forgotten about this whole thing. And I'm on to something else. <laughs> but check it out if you haven't. I think it's awesome. And um, <clears throat> so what else? What else has gone on? Um, ah, Finding Neverland. My wife had a birthday and one of the things that we did to celebrate her birthday was was uh, watch a Broadway production of Finding Neverland, which was awesome. I feel it was. It was something she's always wanted to see. Yes, we know about four or five years ago that a movie starring Johnny Depp and Kate Winslet was put out called with the same title so this Broadway production was based on that and if you guys seen the movie you know the story I'm talking about it's basically the creator of the Peter Pan story and what had gone on in his life and his experiences that inspired him to create what we know today as the classical Peter Pan. You know, Peter Pan, you can fly, you can fly, you know, fairy dust, Tinkerbell, you know, that crocodile and Captain Hook, all that stuff. It was a great, it was a great play. It essentially became a play within the play. And, you know, my wife and I, I took my wife and we had uh, babysitters watch the, watch the three kids. And uh, the funny thing that day was there was an, there's an intermission for the show. And my wife and I went out, got a cup of coffee, a snack, sitting by a fountain. And I get a call from our babysitter, our friend. And, and uh, somehow they got locked out of the house. <laughs> right? But everyone's fine. 
all three kids, they're in the back of the house playing, you know, play structure, sandbox, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, nope, there isn't a spare key anywhere hidden under a rock in a monkey's ass. Nowhere. Just, but, you know, they had, a a locksmith had been contacted and was going to go help get him in the house. So, while we were watching a play about adventure, you know, the kids were on their own little adventure. And, uh, you know, at the end of it all, um, at the end of the end of it all, you know, everyone lives happily ever after. Well, except for the love interest of the person who created Peter Pan. She actually ends up dying. Sorry, spoiler alert if you haven't seen the movie. Um, awesome. What's going on? My watch says it's time to stand, but I can't stand because I'm sitting down in a vehicle. If I stand, I'll fall down. And I'll bump my head first, then I'll fall down. Um, speaking of kids, so this, um, the, the other day, I was, uh, bringing the kids to work day. And, uh, I wasn't going to bring all three kids to work. It's just no way. And I got to take a train, which is about 12 bucks ahead. And I didn't know my, that my daughter was free to ride, but... I only took my daughter and I paid for a ticket. So I'm out at 12 bucks because I wasn't paying attention. Whatever. A lot of people just cut and jump over the turnstiles or whatever they're called. They're not even turnstiles. They're just like little plastic wedges that open and close um, through the thing. So just want to pay for that low life's ticket. Pay for that low life's fare. Anyways... Um, bring your kids to work day. Um, kind of nervous about it because just a lot of stuff going on and didn't want to have to feel like if I took my kid to work, took my daughter, I just, all my time would be occupied hanging out with her. But man, work did a bang up job. You know, they had to put a team together for bring your kids to work day and had tons of activities from origami and with homemade putty and baking cookies then decorating the not homemade but work made cookies because the office that that I'm in in San Francisco has a full kitchen so you know they they made and they molded and they baked cookies then they put them out and then they cooled the kids got to decorate them and they got to eat them other activities were had to do with like decorating clay little small clay pots planter pots and then you know putting actual plants and soil and stuff and all that stuff they get to take home what else did they do they just they had a little dance session and more activities coloring and puzzles and the kids all the co-worker kids that attended you know they all got to play with with one another my daughter had a great time she was totally independent i didn't need to like check on her the only time I checked on her was just so that I could take pictures and send them send them over to mommy so she could see what was going on it was great it was a great old time and uh you know I'm looking forward to you know next year when we get to do it again and all the kids will be a year older and it was a really great thing if um <clears throat> yeah so thankful for that <clears throat> um but you know it was it was a uh, I described it to a co-worker um the head of our uh, our people ops HR if you will um that it was surreal for me that day because um earlier that morning I was on the fence whether to actually take my daughter in because just things that I need to close up on work-wise and I didn't think that I'd be able to deal with it. Not to mention that same morning got a message that my grandmother uh, passed away and I knew that she was in the hospital and not doing well and and I had been struggling for several days leading up to that day and 
my feeling was, you know, it's just, I have a sense that it's going to happen soon, right? Where my grandmother is going to leave us all. And she did. And it was that day. And I, just, I really didn't, I didn't want to go to work. And I didn't want to bring my daughter in if I did go to work. But I'm glad I did. Um, you know, I was able to see online that because the team is on a on a they, they communicate on a on a there's a communication platform that we're all connected to and I could see that you know a lot of preparation had been made for the kids to attend the to to when they visit the office and I didn't want to be that guy that said yes basically RSVP one child and not to show up it's just bad form and yes there's stuff going on with work and yes there's my grandmother had passed but I kept thinking about <clears throat> my daughter and you know I know that she'd have a great time and I, this was a one this is an opportunity that might not happen next year even though it gets organized because you know the, if they're in school and it, there isn't a right time to take them out of school for whatever reason who knows or so just said, you know, just said, why wait? Do it now. Um, and I'm glad we did. Glad I took her. Um, but it's surreal because, you know, my grandmother passed away and I was, I was, I was really sad. I was really sad, you know, I, and, you know, and I cried. And uh, about it that morning when I got the news. I mean, I knew it was going to happen, but, um, you know, and part of the sadness is also thinking about my cousins and my my brother and my uncle and aunts and stuff. And imagining, you know, the, the hurt and the loss that they're feeling. And, and... You know, it makes me sad. It made me sad, so. Um, but I got through the day, and just, I didn't think about my grandmother so much, but the, the day just floated by kind of in a surreal way. And it also ended up where I felt really exhausted. And as if I had worked out or something, but I didn't. And so then I noticed that I was I, my mood was kind of on the edge I was getting really irritated and I was starting to get mean to the kids at the end of the day and and it made me sad and 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 I I didn't like that place and I knew that you know it's all tied together um the loss and I, and I need time to sort of get myself straight and kind of accept and and do what I need to do. So, you know, I contacted work and I just said, you know, I they had to read, you know, the person in charge of uh, of uh, HR, if you will. I say HR, if you will, because around the now. It's called people ops, people people operations. So HR is probably like a dated uh, terminology. So our people ops, our head of people ops, contacted her, told her I had, to, I had told her earlier in the day about my grandmother passing, but this didn't want to lose out on the opportunity for my daughter to meet other kids and play at the office. So, but I put, I, I I messaged her the night later that night and said, you know, I want to kind of take that take some time for that bereavement thing and I figure I'll take I'll take a I'll take a day and I should be okay you know after that and you know that was that and uh, you know I mentioned to her and I've mentioned it to a few more others that my grandmother was 94 and she outlived her husband and my father and she and her favorite color is green and she uh, drank crappy beer pissy watery beer and really enjoyed watching 
pro wrestling on TV. <laughs> um, she made the best lumpia on the planet. And uh, she served me my first spoonful of coffee when I was a kid. And uh, so those are just a few of the memories that I mentioned uh, about my grandmother. But now, you know, she's in a better place in my mind, in my heart. She's with my grandfather, my father, and others who have gone past, who have left, including the, including the dog that I grew up around uh, when I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' place. So, you know, and they're all kind of doing their thing. Wherever they are, drinking crappy beer, watching pro wrestling. My grandfather's eating his vanilla ice cream because that was my grandfather's favorite ice cream. My grandmother's making some of that, the best lumpia up in, up in the sky. And my dad's doing what he does best. He's taking a bunch of spare change and a hot glue gun and making little knickknacks out of it (laughs) Uh, out of them and the dogs digging holes in the ground (laughs) yeah so you know her name was Faye and that was short for Felomena, my grandmother on my dad's side. She took care of me, my brother, my cousins. She fed us. She washed her clothes. She sheltered us. She gave us a lot of love. She spoiled us with a lot of love. Um, so much to the point where some would say that it was an uh, unhealthy amount of sp- love and spoiling, um, but you know that's w- that's how she was, and now she's gone, and all that's left are all the memories. Yep, and uh, yeah, so rest in peace. So that's how I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thanks for spending the time. Um, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, I, uh, don't want to, actually, I don't want to leave it at that kind of sad, real note, but, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll just make a couple announcements. I sat down on a Zoom with Lonnie, and we started work on, uh, the other podcast um, that really excited to get out to to you know to to get to a point where it'll be released for for podcast consumption um, and I, I love sitting down and talking to Lonnie um, you've heard him in the past episodes he's great you know he's God there's so much so much to say about how wonderful he is as a friend um super interesting has a lot of stories to talk about um but yeah that's something to look into it's a podcast that we have a name or you know there's a name for it but until it's actually sort of laid out you know what it needs to be uh then yeah we'll we'll it'll be out there and um I had a conversation with uh, with Tony Portera. We're you know you know we're going to work together uh, on a, a different podcast outside of Ruas Running, uh, separate from the podcast from Lonnie's. Lonnie's has to do with uh, with service guys and uh, his you know his indus- his his in- his industry um, it, at a that he operates in with his company Restore Restoration out of Jefferson City, Missouri and with Tony you know we're going to talk shit we're going to talk have a good time uh, with a with a ultra spin on things and have a whole lot of fun 
and plan to get um, friends in the ultra community on and you know it'll be it'll be great so this podcast two other upcoming podcasts um you know putting out there um it's a great way if it's a great way to to connect with people uh more ways than one um highly recommend it if anybody's interested in podcasting you know maybe i can help you know it's a lot of work but it's fun work because to bring it back around because one day we'll all be dead and podcast is what we'll leave behind for the future to hear and know like whoa that's what it was before like before damn um so yeah and i'll um leave you with a quote and it's a quote that i shared on instagram damaged people are dangerous because they know how to survive. I'm your host, signing out. Remember, folks, eat something delicious, hug your friends, hug your family, and go run something. Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast. Yeah, I-